Hey guys, this is Richard here playing Richard Plays Nancy Drew Alibi and Ashes. Now, in the last video, um, I basically explored aimlessly around River Heights trying to figure out what to do and what evidence I was missing uh, to get Nancy out of jail. Um, so I finally figured out a new dialogue. Um, apparently, uh, I had to have finished uh, exploring Nancy's house, and there was an article about um, Scoop, the Scoop store being closed. So now we're just gonna um, talk to Deirdre right here. We're gonna talk to Deirdre right here, um, and uh, you have to t apparently you have to talk to Bess first, and she's gonna tell you, "Oh, uh, can you get Deirdre out of the way so that I can snoop in her stuff?" So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna ask her for a walk. Would you like to go for a walk somewhere? No. Okay. Good talk. Oh well. See you later. Goodbye. Okay, hold on. How did it go? It doesn't look like it worked. Brilliant observation. I see why you're the one doing the stakeout. Ouch. Uncalled for. Sorry. I just want Nancy out. Now. She must be getting worried. Goodbye. Bye. Okay, hold on. We're gonna try talking to Tony once more. Oh. She's not even back yet. Here, let's do that. How can I help you? Bye. Bye. Uh huh. Okay. Um. Let's try calling Nancy once more, maybe. Hi. I'm turning the case over to you. Nancy Drew taking over. This is everything I need. Once I correctly match all the evidence to the suspects, I'll be all set. Yes. Okay, this is it. Light scoop closed, not open. Here we go, guys. I think I've got enough evidence. Be right over. Hmm. Looks solid. Looks like you just got yourself a get out of jail free card, detective. Yeah, I'm out of jail, guys. Here we go. Yes, I'm out. Oh my gosh. Okay, cool. So now that I'm out, I should talk to all the suspects. So let's talk to all the suspects right now. We're going to start off back at the antique shop. Talk to Alexi. Look who's out. Glad to see that you could get them to see sense. Do you need anything? Do you need anything? Thanks. I didn't know you were following my case. Couldn't help. Small town. I want you to know that I didn't doubt you not for a second. <sighs> that means a lot. Trust me. I know. I know what it's like to be in your shoes. It's the worst feeling you can have. You know, your friends really worked hard to get you out. I know. I should have worked harder myself. It's probably too late, but anything I can do to help you, anything you need to know, I'm your guy. What do you know about Tony? She railroaded you. Practically dropped the police at your door. Either she just hates you, or she's up to something that only you could crack. Sorry about that, guys. It was a uh, malware stuff kind of thing. Can you tell me anything about the fire? Anything at all? You know, I, I wish that I could. I, I already told everything I know. Except... Except what? Okay, I went in. You what? I went in. Into the building. I saw you come running out. You, you looked scared. I just knew it wasn't you who set the fire. That reporter was just standing there. Like she was waiting for you to come out. It wasn't right. Why didn't you say anything? It wouldn't have mattered. No one listens to me or trusts me. Will you testify to that? Yes, but it's not enough. Y you need more evidence. Why did you go into the town hall when it was burning? The time capsule. Bennington told me he'd put the magnifying glass somewhere I wouldn't find it for years and years. I always assumed he meant in the time capsule. I was just hoping to finally be able to say, See? I didn't do anything. But I guess it's gone now. Well, 
how did you become a detective in the first place? I was pretty young at the time, and back then my parents owned a shop, much like this one. I wasn't much into the news then, but I knew in those days people didn't much like immigrant families like ours. One night, someone threw rocks through the plate glass window, completely shattering it. My parents were very upset, but they were afraid to go to the police. It wasn't done where we were from. So I took it upon myself to catch the culprit. Did you? <laughs> Never did. But that's when I learned that even a small, nice-looking town has its secrets. I decided I wasn't going to put up with secrets anymore. Why did you give up on being a detective? It wasn't a choice. The cases stopped coming. See you later. Good day. Okay. Now let's talk to Brenda over here. <clears throat> Nancy, how are you adjusting to life on the outside? Fine, thank you. I'm not in the mood to do an interview. That's okay. Everything you say will be off the record. You're still holding your microphone. <laughs> Sorry. Habit. Still holding it. All right. You're good. Word of warning, I will get the exclusive. I always do. Why wasn't your van at the fire? It was. I just came separately. I shared the van with other reporters sometimes. Can you tell me a little bit about your van? I never pictured myself as the kind of person to drive around in a van. But I have to admit, this one is pretty cool. Why is that? First thing, it's less of a van and more of a mobile action center. I spend more time in here prepping <coughs> stories than I do at home. <coughs> Why are you playing me up as the villain in the media? I'm just doing my job. I'm letting the world know about all of the suspicious things you've done. You should be reporting on the truth, not trying to grab a better job. My life is at stake. Mine too. And anyway, what good does telling the truth do if no one can hear you? Is there a way I could get in touch with you later? Good question. Why don't you take one of my cards? Is this your cell phone number? Yes. You have the reputation of being the first on the scene. How do you do that? When news breaks, I get there first. Yes, I've seen the ad. I mean, how do you make it to the scene first? It's a secret of the trade. You were at the scene of the fire so fast. How did you manage that? It's my job to be ready at a second's notice. Some people think I'm just lucky. I prefer to think I'm just that good. Do you mind if I look around in the van? Yes, for a variety of reasons, Nancy. First, it's mine, so no. Second, I have dirt on everyone in this town in here. And as a journalist, it's my ethical duty to make sure that all of the embarrassing footage I've got stays private until such a time that it is fit for broadcast. You mean, like, blackmail? No. No. Is that what you think of me? It's not blackmail. It's fact-checking. I have to balance the individual's right to privacy with the public's need to know. You didn't exactly extend that courtesy to me. Didn't I? I think the public needs to know everything it can about the criminal, I'm sorry, alleged criminal activities of the local self-appointed do-gooder. See you later. Goodbye. Oh, she really wants, she's really out for Nancy. You can totally tell. I wonder if she's the culprit. All right, let's talk to Deirdre and Tony. Good to see you were so concerned. Oh, I'm sorry if I was misleading. I wasn't concerned. I want to know what you were doing at the fire. Why were you there? Look, I don't care about the stupid clues challenge. I really don't. The only reason I was in it was because my dad never shuts up about how I need to be active in the community and blah. Then why were you following me? I assumed you were cheating. Why would you assume that? Because I was cheating. I thought we were all cheating. That's why I thought it would be fun to catch you in the act. But instead, you did something super crazy, which I did not anticipate. I didn't set the building on fire. That's cool. Just so you know, you do do a pretty great impression of someone who has recently burned down a building for no reason. Why are you hanging out here today? Didn't 
tell your friend to stop spying on me? It's distracting. I'm not spying on you! The fact that you responded proves my point! Oh! Shoot! Thanks for being so helpful, giving Ned all the information. Just looking out for my number one buddy. <laughs> right. Your boyfriend's cute, and you were in the clink. I think I'm blameless here. Well, I think. Relax, Nancy. I'm not one of those girls. I was just window shopping. Anyone can tell he's not going to budge on the you situation. It was just nice to spend a little time with him instead of the idiot boys on campus. I swear, you think they're going to get more mature in college, but they just head the other direction. See you later. See ya! Okay, let's talk to... Let's talk to Bess. Hi. Well. See you later. Bye. <laughs> We're not going to ask her to get some ice cream. Let's talk to Tony. Nancy, happy to see that you're doing all right. Just so you know, I've been pulling for you this whole time. That's not what I heard. Well, you know what they say. Don't believe half of what you read and anything you hear. Including Nell? I see that your reputation is well deserved. What do you want? Tell me about the fire. What were you doing? I've been over this with enough people already. I was out, I saw smoke, I made a call. Did you put pressure on the police to arrest someone? Yes, of course I did. You did? I didn't tell them who to arrest. I just told them to do their jobs. Aren't you worried that you pressured the police into making unnecessary assumptions? You would have done the same thing. You know it's harder than you think to run a town. If someone has to take the fall for the common good once in a while, so be it. Well, that's not very fair. Fairness is a luxury in government. It's sad, but it's true. See you later. Bye. Hmm. That's done. Did that. Okay, so explore the van. So we have to go back to uh, Brenda's van and explore it. So we're going to do that right now. So yeah, my opinion, I think Brenda and Tony are both looking like pretty prime suspects. Alexi wants to help us, but you know, he could, it could be a cover up and Deer just this just Deer doing, you know. She she kind of hates Nancy, but you know, I don't know. Trying to help her out at the same time, so who knows. Hi. Oh. I'll let you go. Bye. That's not what we we're supposed to do. We are supposed to call Brenda through her phone and get her out of the van. Okay, now she is gone from her van, and we can explore. What is this? How could Brenda have possibly made it to all of those interviews so quickly? It doesn't make sense. So apparently she's been getting to interviews, like, really quickly, and it doesn't really make sense. So there's there's got to be something that she's doing, something that's making her cheat. We got the key for this, so we're going to open this right now. Some friction on your end concerning our decision to pull your antiquity story from the national broadcast schedule. So this is when uh, Nancy Drew got to the antiquity antiquity story first, and and uh, and Brenda got super mad about it. So that's a pretty good motive. Anyway, um, we're gonna be solving this puzzle in the next video. Um, Brenda is in interviewing Bess, but Deirdre's in the background, and we're gonna have to. Uh, we use these channel things to hear what Deirdre's saying in the background. So we're going to be doing that in the next video. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Until next time, guys. Peace.